G'day, Professor Joseph Drew. This is another video in my series on financial sustainability where I draw on my extensive database, uh, mostly so far from New South Wales, but I've got databases in other states I will get to shortly. Um, and this time we're looking at the unrestricted cash position. And when you watch this video, you'll understand why I'm going greyer, why I'm losing hair, and why I'm losing sleep. Okay, so for non-local government people, there's basically, and I know this is super simplified, but I don't want to get into the detail. There's basically three pockets of money for local governments. There's externally restricted cash money we have in the bank that we can't touch. There are developer contributions, water funds, sewer funds, or money that's been granted to us for a particular purpose. We can't use that for everyday expenses. There's internally restricted cash. So this is money that's been put aside for a specific purpose and some of those purposes are incredibly important and there will be a video in the next week or two looking at the internal cash position which is also very alarming and then there's unrestricted cash unrestricted cash is not earmarked for any particular purpose it's not uh, barred by law from us to use it's what we can use to basically plug up deficits now a rule of thumb is that you should have two to three months worth of cash expenses in your unrestricted cash there would be very few councils in new south wales or australia that do actually have that there's an awful lot of councils far too many that actually have negative unrestricted cash which is a matter of grave concern those councils should be lining up for an srv they should have someone monitoring them and working with them because that is the final step in a long descent and you really don't want to take that next step um, so that's scary in itself what's also a worry is that there's still an awful lot of councils not internally reserving their prepaid grants now the federal government's prepaying these grants uh, for a quite surprising duration at the moment now one day they won't prepay that, those grants anymore and the money won't turn up if you haven't internally reserved those prepaid grants you're actually putting a better gloss on your unrestricted cash than what is warranted now what's extremely concerning is that i was only looking at council the other day where they had negative unrestricted cash an amalgamated council and yes sadly they've all been damaged by guess and giggle commercial consultant work and ill fought out state government policy they've got now got negative uh, unrestricted cash plus they haven't uh, they haven't internally reserved the prepaid grants was some six and a half million dollars so their real position it says that they're uh, some $700,000 in the red in unrestricted cash, but their real position, if they'd prepaid the grants like they should be, an auditor general, if you're listener listening, the whole point of going to central auditing was that we could get some consistency, and it should be consistently done throughout the state that these um, FAG, prepaid FAG grants are internally restricted. If you did that, their real position is negative seven point something million dollars this this is after 50 something plus percent tax increase a few years ago that's extremely concerning i don't think people understand how diabolical the financial sustainability situation is for a lot of our councils particularly rural councils particularly amalgamated councils and in this video very shortly i'll show you some graphs so this first graph is for six financial years all this data comes off audit to financial statements remember we're missing still a dozen councils because the auditor general can increase their fees but they can't increase the speed of their auditing apparently um so we're missing some data now those councils that are missing tend to be in even worse situations than most other councils uh that's probably why they're taking time so this is probably putting a better gloss on things now this graph is in nominal terms i haven't adjusted for inflation the time value of money and i do have three lines on here because it's really important here that you understand the differences so we have the median its resistance is skewing it's often the best measure of central tendency that the mean has its purpose and has its place um there's quite a big difference here the blue line the mean 
we, we're compared to the gray line, the median. Now that means that we need to be careful when we're using the average. And what it suggests is that that means probably being skewed by some quite big numbers. Now, if we look up to the orange line, the standard deviation, which is the, the average spread of the data, you can see it's phenomenally high and it's been getting bigger and bigger. Now, what that means is the difference between the councils that are in sig significant problems and distress and the councils that are doing okay is widening and has been widening at an alarming rate in recent years. So some people might think that this data doesn't look too bad. It's sort of going uphill. Um, but if you consider how large that standard deviation is, it's good reason for concern. And if you consider the time value of money, which we'll look at in the next value, you'd be really, really concerned. So we're all aware that money has a time value. A dollar when I was a kid was worth an awful lot more than a dollar is now. I can remember you used to be able to buy a Haberhart for 50 cents when I was a kid. Nowadays it's like five dollars. Um, that's the effect of inflation, the time value of money. Now, if we adjust those figures, and I'm only looking at the median and the mean now, for the whole state, for those six years, if we adjust them by inflation, the picture's quite grim. You can see that the median, which I think is the best measure of central tendency here with this skewed, distorted data, has actually gone downhill in real, real terms over the last six years. That's a worry. It should be going up, um, particularly if you're not internally reserving your prepaid grants. The mean has gone up ever so slightly, particularly in the last year. But remember that size of that standard deviation is really skewing things now. In a minute, we'll look at urban councils and rural councils, and you'll see there's a gulf, a wide gulf between those two types of councils. Now, I should say at this point, if you're a councillor, you should know, if you're a GM, you should know the amount of unrestricted cash to the dollar any given moment in time, your CFO certainly should. You should be asking about it every meeting. If you're one of these councils flirting with negative unrestricted cash, you should be looking at what's happening in your internal restricted accounts. There'll be a future video on that. And realistically, you need help quickly and you need to be taking some big steps now in May's the right time because of the operational planning protocols in New South Wales. If you don't know where to go with this, uh, hop on the phone, give me a ring. I'll give you confidential advice. What you do with it's your business, but it's not the time to be stuffing around if you're close to negative or if indeed you are negative. So let's look at Metro councils. This is in nominal terms still. I haven't inflated like I did in the previous graph. So in nominal terms, things have been flat. You can see there's a wide gulf, gulf in the standard deviation. There's a big difference between the councils that don't have any cash or very little cash and the ones that have oodles. So some councils doing very, very well, usually in a city, usually in the wealthier areas. Um, the line's more or less flat line, which is a concern when we know that a lot of councils aren't internally restricting their fags, when we know that the cost of things are going up, that figure should be going up. Those blue and gray lines should be going up and they're not. So that is a concern. Okay, so here's a graph of the rural councils. What you'll notice straight away is that the order of magnitude is 10 times smaller, roughly. Then remember these are in thousands of dollars like all my graphs and all my videos, because that's how it's presented in New South Wales audited financial statements. Remember, uh, quite a few councils are missing and they tend to be the councils with more problems. Um, remember also, this is in nominal terms. We're not taking in the real value of the money. So the typical council, which I think is best measured here by the median, has gone downhill. That's a concern. It's the rural councils with their back up against the wall. They're the ones that have the massive road networks that are costing more and more to maintain all the time. That's where inflation's really been hitting hard. They're the ones with very little opportunity to uh, generate other revenues. They're the ones who have been disadvantaged a lot by amalgamations in particular um, because people were under the impression you could teleport from one place to another rather than having to drive there. They're the ones who have been disadvantaged because the intent of our financial assistance grant legislation has not been abided by by grants commissions over decades and decades and decades. 
So it's concerning that the grey line's heading downhill. It says on the whole our rural councils are under stress. You can see the blue line's going up a lot. That means that's once again showing us the skewing, the gap between there. There's obviously a few councils have increased their unrestricted cash dramatically, and that's skewing up the mean, making it look better than what it is. That's why I prefer to look at the median here. And you can see that also reflected in the standard deviation for this last year. Remember, if you are one of these councils and you're skirting with negative unrestricted cash or you have negative unrestricted cash, the time to act is now. If you want confidential advice, give me a ring. Look, I hope that was helpful. If you found it helpful, send a comment, give me the thumbs up, all those sorts of things. Flick it round to other people. We need to get those subscribers up to 500 still. If you're not now going to have a restless night and not be able to sleep well, I'm not quite sure why. Um, a lot of councils, not all councils, but a lot of councils in a real predicament and some of them are in a diabolical position. It is a big concern and in the future you'll see a, a, a video on internally restricted cash. I suggest you watch that one too because that underscores my concerns. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.